In this video, I want to show you the four properties of operating characteristic curves for your acceptance sampling plan. The first property concerns situations in which the sample size is a fixed percentage of the lot size. And this has an historical aspect to it because in the early years of quality assurance, it was common to inspect, say, 10% of whatever the total lot size is. So in this example, we have three different lot sizes, and they are 900, 300, and 90. And let's compare what happens when our sample size is 10% of the lot size. So the corresponding sample sizes will be 90, 30, and 9. So as you can see, the general trend is that the larger our lot size is, which will in turn mean a larger sample size, the steeper our OC curve will be. So what's the significance of this property? Well, let's draw lines to see what the probabilities of acceptance for these various lot sizes would be for a process with, say, 1% of non-conforming. Well, the smallest lot size of 90 probability of acceptance would be 80%, and the probability of acceptance for a lot size of 300 would be about 40%. But as we increase the lot size to 900, the probability of acceptance significantly decreases to 20%. Okay, so let's look at the second property of OC curves, in which case we're looking at a fixed sample size. Let's consider a fixed sample size of 90, looking at lot sizes of 900, 450, and 180. As you can see in this example, the curve shape is very similar when we have a fixed sample size. Moving right along to the third property of operating characteristic curves, in which case we consider an increase in the sample size. In this example, we look at three different situations with the same lot size of 5,000. The only difference is the first example has a sample size of 100, the second one has a sample size of 50, and the third one has a sample size of 25. The general trend that we see here is that as the sample size increases, the curve becomes steeper. This brings us to the last property of OC curves. Let's consider what happens when the acceptance number, or C, decreases. In this example, we have a lot size of 2,000 and a sample size of 50 for each of these three curves. The only difference is, in the first curve, we consider an acceptance number, or C, of 4. In the second example, we consider a C of 2. And in the third example, we consider an acceptance number of 0. So as you can see, as the acceptance number decreases, the curve becomes steeper. So it might seem advantageous to simply decrease the sample size in your acceptance sampling plan. However, this is not always the case. Let's look at an acceptance sampling plan that is very similar to the green one, which had a sample size of 50, lot size of 2000, and acceptance number of zero. In this case, the lot size will be the same as 2000. However, we're going to increase the acceptance number by two and increase the sample size by 250. As you can see, this allows us to get a shoulder at the initial part of the curve where we have little to no percent nonconforming. What's nice about this is that your probability of acceptance gets extended for these very small percent nonconforming ranges. But there's a psychological effect here too because some corporate policies might state that their product or process is not acceptable if they have any non-conforming units. So their corporate philosophy may just maintain that the acceptance number will always be zero. This brings us to the ideal OC curve as shown in this picture. The ideal OC curve can only be achieved with 100% inspection. In other words, the sample size is the same as the lot size. What's nice about this is we have a very large shoulder, there's no curve, meaning there's only 100% probability of acceptance or there's 0% probability of acceptance for a given percent non-conforming value. And those are the four properties of OC curves to be aware of as you construct your own acceptance sampling plan.